We have it in Blender Render and after a few years we got one of the most awaited features of Blender, the Shadow Catcher. Quick disclaimer before we start, the Shadow Catcher will be available from the version 2.79 officially, but if you want to use it before, because as I'm recording this video we are still in the 2.78c, you can go to the download section and if you scroll down to the bottom you can download the Bleeding Edge daily builds, which include the latest features and fixes. Enjoy! Let's start with a very quick version for those of you who are impatient about this, <laughs> I can't understand you. So, we will select this plane which we want to be the shadow catcher. We are going to the object tab and at the bottom we will find the cycle settings panel and under it we will find the shadow catcher. Let's hold it and there we go, we have our shadow catcher already working. So this is the basics, now in the rest of the video I will show you how to integrate this with uh, real footage and then at the end of the video I will show you how it used to be. Right, how we had to do this before there was a shadow catcher. So you can see the difference, but still see the old method because it might be interesting to you to know how it is done. Okay, first thing we need to do is to just load the footage. So I'm going to load it here to the node editor, enable the compositing nodes, enable use nodes, and enable the backdrop option. So we can previsualize in the background of the node editor what we are doing. So Let's first load the footage, which I have here. I'm just dragging and dropping it from the folder in my OS. And this footage is of a girl jogging on the road. And here, for example, we can select how many uh, frames we want to play from this clip. And now if we scroll through this, we can see that girl running. I want to composite Susan right here. Okay, but first, this uh, video comes from Videoblocks, which is sponsoring this video, so let me show you a quick introduction for Videoblocks. Videoblocks has one of the fastest growing, largest stock video libraries with over 3 million videos, After Effects, and motion backgrounds. This includes the only contributor marketplace that gives 100% of the commission back to the artists. This month, Videoblocks is launching a new collection featuring hundreds of new Unreal clips, including space, VR, deep water, fantasy and sci-fi footage. This now all come included with your subscription and for a limited time, you also get free 4K clips from the membership library at no additional cost. Videoblocks is giving away 7 free day trials so you can try it out and explore this new collection for free. Sign up to Videoblocks using the link in the description below, get an exclusive 7 day free access and download videos like the one I used in this tutorial. Alright, thank you for watching, now let's go and continue and if you press Ctrl Shift Click you can preview these uh, layers or these nodes, okay? And uh, what we need to do is to render Susan so we can preview it here too. So let's press F12. There we go. And here we can preview it if we press Ctrl Shift click. And uh, now we have to composite this on top. And the way we do this is with the color, alpha over, and let's put the background, or, which is the footage, the real footage in the first input, and the foreground or Susan in the second input. And this of course is not working. Okay, this, there are so many things wrong here. So let's go one by one on what is wrong here. First thing, the head is not completely uh, well oriented. If we press zero in the numpad to watch from the camera, we see that the camera is not aligned with the background footage. Then we have different sizes between the footage and the render, which is easily solvable, but we will have to do it. And finally, we don't have a transparent background for the head, so uh, we are only seeing this gray weird background. So first let's fix the weird background and the way we do this is by going to the render tab and under film just enable transparent. You can see that here now the background is transparent so if we press F12 again there we go here we see the thing okay the head of Susan is now in the middle. Now let's adjust the size 
And for the size, what's uh, going on is that if we go here to the render options, you can see that the dimensions are now at 50%. The real footage that we have in the background is full HD, but Susan is also rendering full HD, but at 50%, which is great for testing, all right, because the render is faster, but uh, we would have to match the background uh, resolution, right, which would be just bringing this to 100%, so it's full HD too. However, I want to make this background adapt to the render size, so we can make tests very quickly, all right, and not have to render this in full HD all the time. The way we do this is by going here and creating a distort scale node. Just paste it here. And instead of relative, let's go and click on render size. You can see that now the footage has adapted to our render size, which is 50% of full HD. All right, so now we have Suzanne on top of the background and with the transparent background. This is so perfect. Now we only need to adjust the camera and this very quickly, we are going to select the camera here or from the outliner, outliner, sorry. Let's just bring it down with G set. And now let's press R X twice. So we move it, we can rotate the camera on the X axis, local axis, sorry. Just keep tweaking it. And now let's just bring it a bit like this and like this. So we can control where the camera is, where the head is on top of the video. If we want to preview the video in the background, there is uh, it is very easy. You, you just press N here to show the properties region. And under background images, let's enable the background images, add an image, and just go here and click on Girl Jogging with Pet Dog, right, which is our um, our background. Okay. Now, remember, if you want to use this, uh, this, this footage here in the background, you can go, uh, you can follow the link that I will leave in the description below and uh, create um, uh, a free trial account on Videoblocks to download it. Okay. Now here, there is another thing that we can do, which is increase the opacity to 100%. So we see the, the full video there. And also instead of being in all views, because if we jump to the front view or side view, we will still see the video in the background. We can just say that this is only visible from the camera. All right. So this will allow us to see what's going on and to place this correctly. All right. Okay, now finally we press F12 and let's see our masterpiece. There is something still not going well, which is that if you see this, composite is connected to the render alone. So we would have to just connect the last of the nodes, okay? Now, keep in mind that in this tutorial, I'm not trying to make it realistic. I'm not trying to create a huge and crazy material for Suzanne or just uh, tweaking all the details. I'm just trying to show you the process to use the shadow catcher. So let's press F12. And now we should get the final result right here. There we go. Okay, we just traveled back in time a few days and I wanna show you how it looked like to do the same exact thing without having the shadow catcher in cycles. Yeah, so no shadow catcher here and this is what we get. A plane under Suzanne, this is, this is not great, this is not ideal. So let's see the steps that we would have to follow in order to make this happen without the shadow catcher. You will see that it's way more tricky than it is now with the shadow catcher, but uh, you may find it interesting. So first, we need to create three different render layers for this <laughs> stuff, okay? And this is very simple, but well. Okay, let's go to the render layers and let's create one with Suzanne, another with floor and another with floor and shadow. Okay. So basically we need to do a couple of things. First, select the lamp and the lamp, let's press M and move it to, to the first and the second layers at once by pressing shift while clicking. So the light exists both in, in, in the layer one and two. Okay. That's the first step. Next, we have to select Susan and uh, keep it in the first layer and select the plane and move it to the second layer. Now here for the scene, let's enable both of them holding shift. There we go. Now we have to set this up. So first we have Susan only. This is the first layer. 
Now we have the floor only. This is the second layer. Now we have the floor and shadow. What is this? This is the second layer too. But there is one difference between these both, which is that the floor with the shadow will render the floor including the shadow, which means that even though here Susan is not visible in this render layer, it will be still calculated and uh, sh the, its shadows will be projected. But in this one, I want to exclude Susan from the operation, so its, uh, its shadow is not projected on the floor. For this, we exclude the first layer from here. Now, uh, we can try to render these layers by pressing F12 and see what happens. So here we have Susan, here we have the floor, and here we have the floor with the shadow. So if we go here, you can check both of them. So this is Susan, here's the floor, and here's the floor with Susan's shadow, even though Susan is not here. This is perfect. Now, there is a few steps that we need to follow here. First, we need to create the shadow and put it on top of the background and then put Susan on top of the background too. So this we already did. Now what we need to do is to superimpose the shadows on top of the background. The way we do this is by uh, selecting these render layers, duplicate it twice, okay? And here we're going to select the floor and the floor with the shadow. In fact, the other way around will be better organized this way. Now we're going to select a color mix. We're going to connect the shadowed one in the first input and the floor only in the second input. All right, and what we are going to do with this is divide and check what happens. What's happening is that with this operation, we are basically comparing both images and finding the parts that are different. So the parts of the, pl of the plane that are the same exact color, when divided in by each other, they give us a value of one, which means completely white color. And this is great because we can now multiply this on top of the background to get the shadow on top of it, right? The, way this, the, the, the reason this happens that way is that if you divide a number by itself, it gives you a value of one, and one translated to a color in Blender means white. Zero is black, okay? So, that said, let's go here. Let's create another color mix. Let's put this here and check this out. If we just press here, multiply, we get this. This is not ideal, right? This is because when we divide it, you can see that there is alpha in the background, and if we multiply, the alpha is actually a black area, right? So here, we are going to just enable this option, which will respect our alpha. And now we have the shadow on top of the floor. But if we go here and have the Susan on top of uh, all this combination, we have the same exact effect that we had with the uh, shadow catcher. However, you can see that this uh, gives us much more work. It will not always be possible to separate all the objects this way with layers because we might need them to be in a different way. Uh, but this has uh, its advantages. For example, we could select these things and uh, arrange it, for example, with a converter, color ramp, put it here between this operation and the other, okay? And here, you could see now that we can tweak this value, okay, and tweak the uh, darkness of this shadow, okay, or how it looks like. However, we would break the alpha, right? And for this, we could connect this alpha in the factor, and there we go. Okay, so instead of selecting it here and uh, using this, uh, that, that comes into the, uh, into the second input, all right, because this image has the alpha from this render layer, but once we pass it through a color ramp, we lose that alpha, okay? So we can just connect the alpha of the original image and use it as the factor for the multiplying mode, uh, for the mul multiplying node, so the dark areas in the alpha will just be transparent here. I hope that you liked and enjoyed this video. Make sure to subscribe and like it if you did. And I really like the shadow catcher. I think it has some room for improvement, but I definitely think it's a good starting point. If you want to watch something similar to this, uh, but done the old way, including camera tracking and all, I recommend you to check this video that will be somewhere around here, where I explain how to uh, do the camera tracking of a real video so you can then composite um, uh, objects in movement on top of it. I hope you like it and see you soon. Happy blending.